BestBookBids.com presents Ready Fire Aim, 0 to 100 million in no time flat by Michael Masterson, published in 2007. Whether you're thinking about starting a new business or growing an existing one, Ready Fire Aim has what you need to succeed in your entrepreneurial endeavors. In it, self made multimillionaire and best selling author Masterson shares the knowledge he has gained from creating and expanding numerous businesses and outlines a focused strategy for guiding the small business through the four stages of entrepreneurial growth. Along the way, Masterson teaches you the different skills needed in order to excel in this dynamic environment. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of Ready, Fire, Aim. When launching a new business, what should consume your time? In launching new businesses, many entrepreneurs do the opposite of spending 80% of their time on selling. They spend most of their time, attention, energy, and capital on things such as setting up an office, designing logos, printing business cards, filling forms, writing contracts, and refining the product. They have the impression they are doing things in a logical order, getting everything just right before they open their doors. In fact, they are wasting valuable resources on secondary and tertiary endeavors. It is enough to have the product and customer service just okay at the outset, Perfecting them can be done a little later, after you've gotten feedback from your customers. Sell as soon as you can, if possible, before you have spent a lot of time and money making it perfect. The story of a New York realtor. A New York realtor spent $10,000 on a website to sell surplus office space. Listings were free for the first year and would then cost $59.95. No one took advantage of the free offer. He hadn't tested his assumption that he could attract lots of free postings and then convert them into paid advertisers. The story of the car repairman's neon lights. A car repairman thought he could sell neon lights for underneath cars. He started with $1,000, 350 of which built two crude prototypes, one for his car and one for his friend. Then he spent all of his spare time and remaining $650 on selling. He worked from home. He spent his time traveling to custom auto shops, and auto events trying to make sales. After talking to potential buyers, he made adjustments to his product, his pricing, and the way he presented it. For months, he earned nothing, reinvesting cash into sales. At year one, he started fixing up a shop, bought tools and inventory. 12 years later, he had generated $23 million in sales. Priorities when starting a business. Get the product ready enough to sell it, but don't worry about perfecting it sell it. Then, if it sells, make it better. Front-end, back-end strategy. Consider offering your product to below the market rate to build a list that you can sell more stuff to, the back-end. The purpose of the front-end sale is to acquire a new customer. The purpose of the back-end sale is to produce a profit. Test the market by offering your existing customers evaluation versions for free. Speed of execution is key. Speed of execution is key. Accelerate failure. Ready, fire, aim. Two reasons why most good businesses and product ideas never get off the ground. Number one, a desire for perfection. Number two, little chores. What is your unique selling proposition? Find something about your product that is different from or better than the competition. E.g. FedEx, overnight delivery, 7-Up, the u collar. Look at all other similar products on the market and try to identify gaps by reorganizing unfilled customer needs, such as faster service, better prices, superior quality and convenience, personal service, a better guarantee. Unique Selling Proposition, USP. The story of the brewery's USP. Schultz the beer emphasized the painstaking brewery and bottling process, which all beer makers go through, but no one had told the customers. They generated distinction and prominence, a USP. The common claim of pure took on a very different and tangible meaning for their brand. Three aspects of a solid USP. Number one, the appearance of uniqueness. Number two, usefulness. Better to select a useful feature that isn't entirely original and make it seem unique rather than a feature that is unique but is useless. Number three, conceptual simplicity. Nothing sells well that is difficult to explain. Fill in the blanks for your business. The only space that 
space. E.g. the only chain of retail stores for women that gives 10% of its proceeds to breast cancer research. E.g. the only natural health website that is created by a panel of international experts. How to sell the USB. The big idea. That is the headline for your ads. The big promise. How will you improve your customer's life? Specific claims. What could the customer potentially achieve? Proof of these claims. Testimonials. Mentoring and being mentored. Never be afraid to ask questions. Never be afraid to ask questions, even obvious questions. Have multiple mentors. Ask for ideas from up, down, and sideways. Show your appreciation with notes and gifts. Make your own decisions and take responsibility for them. Your products, brand new or old, copy or innovate. Consumers aren't looking for brand new products. They are looking for clever new adaptions of products they already know and love. When it comes to new, the human brain can only take a little bit of it. 80% of the old and 20% of the new is a good ratio. When you create Me Too products, you are imitating something that is already being sold. You are following the market. You must anticipate the market, not follow it. To do that, create products that are not entirely new, just a little bit better than the hottest thing out there. You are after the tipping point effect, which is the one extra dollop of water that is added to many more that have been dropped before. Imitation doesn't work because it is always too little too late. Instead, notice what products are working and then create products with features that are somehow more advanced. It's an evolution not revolution. It's an evolution, not revolution. Three fundamentals. Number one, the secret to breaking into new markets or reviving a flagging business is to create tipping point products. Number two, the secret to catching tipping point products is to find hot products in rising markets and come up with some way to make them new and different. And three, you need tipping point products for your front end but you can make lots of money on the back end with ordinary products so long as you make the effort to sell them to your existing customers. Need product ideas? Use the magic product cube. Generate three dimensions for each category, price, product type, and USB, giving you 27 product variations. Price, inexpensive, moderate, expensive. Product type, golf clubs, golf balls, golf clothing. USB, three golf pros, four endorsements. The story of the candy company trying to cut cost. A candy company wanted to save money, so they cut out one of the 38 ingredients, which was costing 8.6 million a year. In test, customers couldn't tell the difference. They repeated this process several times. Sales started tumbling. They found an old bag of lollies. They tasted great. The new lollies, tasted crap. They had been comparing each version to the previous version, so they couldn't tell the difference. They should have been comparing to the benchmark. This is a warning about increasing profits by decreasing cost. Lessons about customers. Customers don't care about you or your business. They care about themselves. Why do customers buy? To feel good about themselves and or to solve a problem. Customer complaints and objections are the key to better selling. Take advantage of the buying frenzy. By selling more to a person that is buying at that moment, don't let them cool off. Send them a thank you note and a bounce back promotion. Who would you rather sell a carry-on bag to? A person with 15 at home or a person without one? The answer is the guy with 15. Three factors that stimulate buying frenzies. Having the feeling that I have more money than I need. Being exposed to psychological effective selling signals. The good feelings I get from buying. What is easier to sell? Commodity items or discretionary items? When selling commodities, you are meeting a need, but customers won't be loyal to you. They will always try to pay as little as they have to. When selling discretionary items, especially luxury items, it is easier to convince your customer that your particular products are unique and that by purchasing them, he can get the psychological benefits the items offer. When buying discretionary items, your customers will never be satisfied with a single purchase. In fact, the more they buy, the more they want to buy. 
because their purchases are stimulated by desires, not needs. Desires can only be satisfied temporarily. Desires can only be satisfied temporarily. Stimulate desires such as acceptance, recognition, admiration, love. The story of how to become a movie maker, the ready, fire, aim way. Mark Singer was fascinated with the story of an underground city of homeless people in New York. He found them and even lived with them. Someone suggested he make a movie. He had always wanted to be a movie maker, so it, it took action. He did it on the cheap and Dark Days won several awards at the 2000 The Sundance Film Festival. And his career is flourishing. And that's a wrap on Ready, Fire, Aim. Subscribe to our channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. And for hundreds of audio podcast summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. If you want to connect with myself and need some guidance, advice, coaching, etc., drop me an email at coaching at bestbookbits.com. Thanks for watching and listening, and stay tuned for more.